air resistance. So one of the common uh, exercises uh, when uh, learning animation is to uh, create an animation of a leaf uh, drifting to the ground or a sheet of paper um, floating to the ground. So uh, something like this. Uh, now that is a terrible animation of a leaf drop, so uh, don't take that as an example. Let's look at some, some better examples. So here's one pencil test. Okay, it's pretty nice. And here's a paper drop. So the loop the loop motion is a little exaggerated, but uh, but otherwise quite. Uh, nice in general. So, of course, uh, in this case the uh, motion is not as uh, simple as a standard ball drop because uh, we have air resistance that is uh, significant. So let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, the force of air resistance. So it's a force that acts on a moving object and it depends on the size of the object, specifically the area, and it also depends on how fast the object's moving. And uh, the larger the object, or the larger the speed, uh, the larger the air resistance. Uh, this is um, very easy to experience uh, directly. If you uh, just hold your window out, uh, sorry, hold your hand out the window uh, in a car, and uh, the faster the car goes, the more force uh, that you feel. Uh, now, you uh, should notice that the uh, force of air resistance uh, increases rapidly with speed. So if you're going uh, 30 miles an hour, you'll feel a certain force. If you double the speed to 60 miles an hour, uh, it will actually be four times more force. So uh, that increases rapidly with, uh, with increasing speed. Now, um, we normally think of a feather uh, falling uh, slowly, and uh, we understand that it's not so much because of its weight, but it's because there is a significant force of air resistance on a feather. Uh, but if we do the classic experiment of uh, placing a feather and a coin in a vacuum chamber and, and dropping them together, you uh, would see that the feather and the coin uh, fall at the same speed. And there's, there's lots of videos online that show that. Uh, another way of demonstrating the same thing is to find a place where there is no uh, atmosphere, so there's no air resistance, and a good candidate would be the moon. So uh, let's look at this clip from one of the Apollo missions. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully They'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Five, five, six, that proves that Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. That uh, Falcon you mentioned, by the way, is the name of the spacecraft. So. Well, um, let's uh, think about a, a related question. Let's say that we have a flat sheet of paper, and we know the flat sheet of paper when you drop it, it uh, drifts down uh, rather slowly because of the air resistance. But uh, suppose that we place the uh, sheet of paper on top of a book. Well, how would uh, how would it fall? Well, let, let's uh, look at a quick video of that. Here's just the sheet of paper, and now we place it on top of a book. 
and you see they they fall together. So, uh, so one way of thinking of this would be that uh, there's no air resistance on the sheet of paper because the book is blocking the air from the uh, from the paper. But maybe a better way of thinking of it is that uh, the paper and the book uh, are falling as one object and uh, there's so much weight of the book that the um, force of gravity, the weight, is uh, much larger than the air resistance that's uh, acting on the book. And so it falls rather quickly uh, compared to just the piece of paper by itself. And uh, if you think about it, the um, when you drop a balloon filled with air and a balloon filled with water, of course the balloon filled with water uh, falls um, uh, more quickly. And if the two balloons are the same size, then the fact that the water balloon is moving faster means that the force of air resistance is actually greater on the water balloon than on the air balloon, just because of its greater speed. Uh, however, that's uh, more than compensated for by the fact that the water balloon weighs much, much more than the air balloon. And so uh, even though there's a greater air resistance on the water balloon, uh, the weight of the water balloon is so great that the air resistance on it is uh, insignificant unless the you drop the water balloon from like an eight-story building. So. Now, uh, let's look a little more um, in depth in terms of what the force uh, acting on a falling object might, might be like. So let's say we have a, a cat that starts falling and just at the moment that it starts falling, uh, it's, it's moving, uh, not, it hasn't really started moving yet. And so the force that we have is just the force of gravity. Let's suppose it's a 10 pound cat. Now the cat's uh, falling, it picks up some speed, the air resistance force starts building up. Let's say that it builds up to be seven pounds. Uh, so on the 10 pound cat, we now have a net force on the cat is now reduced to three pounds. And so the cat is not accelerating as fast as when it first uh, started falling, uh, just from the law of acceleration. And then, uh, but it's still gaining some speed. Uh, and at some point, the speed is large enough that the force of air resistance happens to balance the force of gravity. And now we have net force uh, is zero. And by the law of acceleration, or also um, the law of inertia, uh, once the net force is zero, once the um, forces are balanced, uh, the cat will fall with a constant speed. So um, to kind of uh, show that in another way, if we have an object uh, that's falling, as soon as the air resistance becomes comparable to the weight, uh, the transition is to uniform motion. And because air resistance uh, increases so rapidly with speed, uh, that transition uh, tends to occur rather uh, abruptly. So it's not instantaneous, kind of as I've shown here, but it, the transition is still um, rather uh, abrupt and um, uh, so it's as if um, the acceleration uh, turns off and we have uh, uniform motion. So in, uh, in summary, uh, the force of air resistance on a moving object increases with the object's speed and size. Uh, because air resistance is not a constant force, falling objects don't have a constant acceleration. And this is uh, most noticeable when air resistance is significant. And uh, the air resistance force is significant or noticeable if it's at least comparable to an object's weight. And uh, for a falling object, once the upward force of air resistance balances the downward force of gravity, 
then the falling motion transitions into uniform motion at a constant speed. So uh, we'll actually uh, go into a little more depth about um, this constant uniform speed of um, uh, falling objects. Uh, we call that the terminal velocity. So uh, there'll be another tutorial that uh, describes that in a little bit more detail. So see you then.